Hi there, and welcome to this web lecture on social psychology. Did you know that the presence of others can make you perform better, but also worse? Do you know the criteria for successful leadership? My name is Peter Ruiten, and today we will be talking about groups. This web lecture will be divided in four different sections. In the first section, I will explain what groups are and what they do. After that, I will explain how the individual behavior of members of a group influence group action. After that, I will explain how groups think and how members can influence one another. And finally, I will present criteria for successful or unsuccessful leadership and explain what power does to people. A group is a number of people who have something in common. And this could be anything ranging from people who happen to be waiting for a bus together to people who grow up together in a commune or in a tribe. Groups are more group-like when members of this group are more similar to one another and or there is a rival or an enemy. Um, groups perform better when certain things apply. The first one is that people are uh, individually identified. That means that everybody can share their personal identity. Groups also do better when, people of the uh, when members in a group are flexible to adopt different roles. This means that if there are many people who have the same profession or the same role, they should be able to adapt this and to change this. A group also does better when there is a shared group identity. For example, when you together support a sports team or a political party. Many things can explain how people behave in groups and we can define them in theories. The first one is what we call social facilitation. This means that the presence of other people increases our performance on simple tasks. This is opposite to social inhibition, in which the presence of other people decreases our performance, in this case on complex tasks. The key issue here is um, that the presence of others increases our um, dominant response. And the dominant response is more likely to be correct if we do a simple task and it's more likely to be false if we do a complex task. Another theory that explains group behavior is social loafing. This means that people tend to reduce their effort when they are working in a group. So when you're doing a task by yourself, you're more likely to put more effort in this task compared to when you are doing it together with other people. This social loafing could lead to the bad apple effect, which essentially means that if you have one social loafer in a group, this group is more likely to have other social loafers as well. When groups work together on a task or a project, they often apply brainstorming, a form of creative thinking in which all members are encouraged to generate as many ideas as possible. However, this process has a number of downsides. First, when people work independently, they produce a surprisingly accurate average. But when people in a group follow each other, this advantage is lost. This in turn leads to a loss of independency because they build on each other's ideas instead of working out new ones. This together leads to a decrease in performance. If performance were the only measure, brainstorming would only have negative effects. Luckily, there are also some benefits you can achieve through brainstorming. First, people enjoy working together. It gives them a feeling of togetherness. This in turn satisfies our need to belong, which I discussed in web lecture 11. Finally, people feel more confident about themselves when they brainstorm in a group. This enjoyment and other psychological gains may explain why we are so eager to work in teams. Members of groups can influence each other in many different ways. And the most common theory to explain how groups think is groupthink. Groupthink is a tendency for group members to think alike or to agree with one another. This tendency is higher when you have a similar group to start with. So if members of a group already have the same values and norms. This tendency is also higher when there is a strong directive leader, because people then tend to agree with this leader uh, and therefore all think alike. Groupthink is also more likely to occur when a group is isolated from other people or other groups. So they are less likely to hear arguments from the opposing side. Groupthink could lead to group polarization. This is a shift towards a more extreme position. So if you start a discussion where you lean slightly in favor of a certain position, then you're very likely to end up being strongly in favor of that position. 
group polarization is influenced by the two different social influence types. Um, the first one is informational influence. If you hear more arguments on one side in a group discussion, you are more likely to think that this is the correct decision and therefore you agree with that side of the discussion. Normative influence occurs because members of a group seek acceptance by agreeing with the majority. And if there is a small majority in favor of a decision, then many members um, tend to agree with this decision. Leadership is always necessary when you have a big group. And there's a number of criteria which define successful or unsuccessful leadership. Successful leadership uh, depends on, um, for example, the leader being modest and humble. Um, so in the past, we always thought that a leader had to be proud and um, very present at discussions. But it's more uh, successful when this leader is modest or humble. Successful leadership also occurs when the leader is extremely persistent and following their values and norms. Uh, being, uh, de being decisive and honest is also an important criterion for successful leadership. And finally, having a clear vision for the future defines whether you're a successful leader or an unsuccessful one. This unsuccessful leadership has been shown to be related to a number of different factors. The first one is when a person is promoted above their abilities. Uh, so they're not really competent enough to be a leader in this group. Um, unsuccessful leadership also occurs when the leader is um, failing to make a good team. So if you uh, appoint members of your team based on loyalty and trust, then you're less likely to have a good team when, uh, compared to when you appoint, leader, uh, appoint members of this team uh, based on competence. Unsuccessful leadership also occurs when you have poor interpersonal skills. So when you're not strong in communicating with others or persuading others about your ideas. Uh, you're also more likely to betray people's trust. And if people don't trust you as a leader, uh, then the group is not working properly. Power is having control over other people's behavior or the decisions that they make. And power has a number of different effects on people. First, it makes us feel good when we have power. And this could lead to us focusing more on rewards and punishments rather than focusing on building relationships with your team members. Power could also lead to you relying more on automatic processing and not really deliberately thinking about the decisions that you have to take. Finally, having power um, removes a number of inhibitions that you have and this could lead to making very bad decisions. To wrap up this web lecture, I have um, explained to you what groups are and what they do. I have showed you the different theories that explain group action. I've showed you how different group members influence each other um, by explaining how groups think. And finally, I've showed you criteria for successful and unsuccessful leadership and I've explained what power does to people. That was all for today. Thank you for listening and hope to see you again soon.